Why are we drawn towards water? At the first sight of a pond, we intuitively take a deep breath. We tend to walk closer. We build houses and establish communities by water. It is, after all, the source of all life. Water is where humanity and other ecosystems thrive, and Leverett Pond is no exception. It's a wonderful habitat for many different reptile and amphibian species, as well as many other species, invertebrates and birds and mammals and things of that nature, um, plants. But for reptiles and amphibians, there's a number of local species that really rely on that pond. Um, snapping turtles will nest nearby. Uh, they build their nests near the pond. So removal, you know, anything that decreases the pond will diminish their ability to, to breed and flourish. What we would like to demonstrate to people is the biological value, the, you know, because of the biological diversity, the biological life that's in here, both plant and animal, fish, reptile. It's just loaded with life. And we like it that way. It's just fun to go out there and it is a valuable ecological community that we'd like to maintain. But it's not just the turtles and other wildlife that enjoy this pond. The people of Leverett also consider the pond an essential part of the town. From boating, swimming, and wildlife watching in the warm months, to ice fishing, skating, and harvesting activities in the winter, the pond is enjoyed by local people all year round. Not to mention the variety of education opportunities the pond provides. From painting classes to environmental education for elementary and college students alike, the pond offers a wealth of knowledge to students in and around Leverett Town. It's a loved pond for people in the community, in the town of Leverett, but also people in the region. Um, they enjoy it. It's a very scenic pond. If life gets a little too hard, it's less than a five minute walk down to just like sit at the picnic table and look out at it. Or the woman that I bought the kayak from, who lives in the old parsonage, she actually lets me keep my kayak there. So I just like drag my kayak out and tool around and then everything's better. It's a very um, important uh, fresh, freshwater fisheries. So bass fishermen love this lake. It's a warm water. It's, uh, you know, it gets relatively warm in the summertime in the 80s. So largemouth bass grow like crazy in here. The heavy weed growth allows the bass to hide because they're predator fish. So they really grow well and there's some really significant bass taken out of here the, in the last several years. It was a great place to grow up and we, we were always out here. And, you know, back then all the kids in the neighborhood that all ride their bikes down here to my house because Ma would always say, get out of the house and don't come back till dinner time. So we were always out on the lake, summer and winter. It can be. Uh, uh, winter has got its own uh, particular visual attractions and um, on Sundays you can get so many ice fishermen here and uh, typically a lot of them seem to, quite a lot of them bring dogs and little children so the, there's the fishermen and the dogs running around and uh, the kids running around, you know. Sometimes they light fires which is always surprising. But they light a fire right on the ice, you know. Do they do that? Well, I don't know, <laughs> but they do. Some of the activities have long been traditions among the town's residents. Maple sugaring is among one of the historic activities that is still around now. Since 1795, the Field family has been harvesting maple sugar in the western part of town. As the expensive white sugar supply from England declined, early settlers turned to the local abundance of sugar maple trees and learned from indigenous peoples the way to harvest. As a relatively big body of fresh water, the pond has been a hub for the local population long before Leverett's incorporation. The Pocomtuck and Nipmuc nations used the pond for fishing and hunting. Those who lived around the pond might have benefited from the water source for agricultural uses, growing maize, beans, and squash. The water source later also attracted the settlers looking for farmable agricultural land, who chose to build their first town meeting room and church in Leverett Center, close to the southeast corner of what was then called 
fish pond. Unfortunately, colonial settlement resulted in deadly wars and devastating casualties. The conflicts concluded as the indigenous population diminished and the settlers acquired more land for their settlement. Leverett was incorporated in 1774, and in 1776 the town's first meeting house was built on what is now the first congregational church. Along with the Leverett Town Hall, built in 1845, both historic buildings have since been staunch companions to the pond. At the turn of the 19th century, Leverett became a fast-growing industrial town. According to the Leverett Historical Commission, at the peak of the industrial days, there were more than 20 mills on the Roaring Brook in East Leverett and the Sawmill River in North Leverett. The natural flow and drop of both waterways contained the needed water power for industries from lumber to textiles. What was now termed Leverett Pond had a tannery, sawmill, and cider mill. Today on Leverett Pond, the remainder of a mill foundation on the northeast end of the pond is still visible. The box shop on the east side and the maple sugaring on the west are also living evidences of Leverett's industrial past. Known as the New England Box Company, this shop once employed 40 to 50 Leverett residents, making lock corner boxes that were used in shipping apples, fish, ammunition, and explosives. Leverett Pond provided the water that is needed to make the boxes and the right terrain for the sugar maple trees. At a later time, the pond became an ice pond. Ice has been harvested for use during the summer in different parts of the world for thousands of years actually and the earliest records come from Iran or India where they were bringing ice down the Himalayas. Um, but I think in New England, people were probably taking ice from ponds and storing it in their cellars for a long time, as long as people were here, because obviously it's got this pretty extreme climate with a very hot summer and a very cold winter, so it's nice to have some of a, a harvest of what's going on in winter and you can really appreciate it in the summer. Um, but ice uh, as a commercial product didn't really get big, I don't think, until the beginning of the 19th century. And then um, lots and lots of ponds throughout New England were used as ice ponds and this is an example of an ice pond. Um, some, some of these ponds were actually created. They were like this pond. There was an original small pond and then it was extended by a dam. Because um, ice ponds didn't need to be very deep. They just had to have ice on the top. So if you think back to the 19th century, you think a lot of people around here were essentially farmers or working on the land. They couldn't work. They couldn't work on their farms in January and February and March. There's, you know, the ground's covered in ice and snow, so they couldn't work on their farms. So for many people, especially perhaps poorer people in a way, um, this would be an, uh, an activity they could do to earn a living uh, at a time of year when there wouldn't have been much else competing. So it really fitted into a seasonal kind of economy. So perhaps they would do ice in January and February, move on to maple syrup in March and April, and then, you know, eventually spring would finally come and they could start working in fields again. Another piece of Leverett's history was found in the garage of an old house at the pond, bringing us back to a time without a refrigerator, a time when ice harvesting was practiced during the coldest months. As the industrial period was coming to an end, the size of Leverett Pond declined so much that it was then called Swamp Pond. When the 1938 New England hurricane hit Leverett, the forest surrounding the pond was wiped out. Debris crowded the surface of the water and a sawmill was put on the western shore to cut up the many downed trees from Franklin County. The logs were deposited into the pond to preserve the wood, and the majority of these logs remain in the pond today serving as testament to the origins of the existing dam in Leverett. The Box Shop, once an economic hub, now houses 20 studios and a gallery space for exhibiting artwork. It's hard to say whether the poetic reflection in the pond gave birth to the art, or if the art gave birth to the poetic representation of the pond. The road has one side with all people who live right at the water, and the other side is woods, and I live in the woods. 
But if I walk across the road, I see the mountain range there and the water in front, and that's what I have been painting. I just took last week a photo of the sunset, the gorgeous orange sunset with the dark hills below it, so that's coming still. So I live right on the pond. I live on the opposite side from Els, so we get amazing sunrises. And the sunsets are interesting because they're behind us and we see the reflected light dark mountains it's just it's the reflections on the pond are just incredible my husband is a retired archaeologist and he's a photographer now so i paint from his photographs and photographs of another friend dale monette who's a wildlife photographer up in the quabbin area and how do you interact with the pond outside of your artwork oh kayaking all the time with yeah. my dog she goes with me my little dachshund corgi mix yeah. is right on the front of my kayak i've done some paintings of her um, yeah she wears her little life jacket <laughs> and swimming and just you know just go down there and sit yeah it's so nice and quiet like during the week there's nobody there yeah. i have a kayak there too mm -hmm. and my son takes his canoe out with the dog in the <laughs> canoe and he is he's a hunting dog but he even went in the water when the ice was just barely out in the spring and then pedals around because he gets too hot from running. So then he jumps in, swims for a while, and then he comes out again. Yeah. <laughs> so that's nice. Kayak and went out onto uh, Leverett Pond and got inspired by not only the beauty around me, but the, um, the format of the camera on the phone. So now instead of, you know, usually landscapes are yonder, and so now they were like this, so I could get like from underwater to, in some cases, all the way up to the sky in the same shot. Because I live here, the pond is personal to me, it's, but it could be a pond uh, anywhere in, in New England or around the world. And uh, so there, there's, there's metaphor in this, and that we have this, this dead tree and, the, and sort of the, the cold uh, landscape. But in the background, there's signs of life in these in the warmer colors, and it's reflected in in the water and in the in the sky. Uh, so there's a lot of symbolism and metaphor in here, to to be in, interpreted or determined by the by yourself. You know, oh, this must mean that, or maybe not. <laughs> uh, it's it is what it is, and the pond has inspired it. And if you turn your camera around and show the backdrop. It we'll see not the pond, but the air. You can make a 360 all the way around, and you see those trees. See the those piles of trees, the logs falling down. And I don't take I don't take them down because I I like the way they are, in in their sort of natural state of of life. In addition to art and craft activity, the pond has been used by cows for logging at the north end. However, the largest financial contribution of the pond to Leverett comes from the increase in residential property. Built mostly after World War II as summer shacks, nearly all the houses around the pond have been upgraded to function year-round, and several new properties have been built since 2000. The area is classified in the top value bracket for Leverett as living by water adds to the property value, reflecting the desirability of such a location. The Putney Road Association is responsible for regular road resurfacing and snow clearance on the east side of the pond, while on the west side the Echo Road Association maintains both Echo Lake Road, otherwise known as Camp Road, and the Cider Mill. The stewardship of the pond itself has been carried out by Friends of Leverett Pond and a town-appointed pond committee. Friends of Leverett Pond has taken the initiative in the maintenance of the ecological benefits and recreational access of the pond. In the past two years, the non-profit organization has been working hard to replace the dam at the northeast corner of the pond. The, the dam, the existing dam that's down there now, we think was built after the hurricane of 38 and it's been pretty reliable it just doesn't have a gate that we can use to lower the water it's also um, you know it's just hand mixed poured concrete they just mixed it by hand and put it in there so over the years water has leaked around the edges of the dam and it's starting to weep around the edges as water erodes that rock and concrete and steel that's in there. The dam's critical to keep this water here. Without that dam, 
uh, you'll be able to walk out. You'll be able to walk from here all the way over to the other side. It, there won't be any water in it. There will be about 20 acres out of the 102 acres that we now have, which will be tragic mm -hmm. for everybody, for the people that live here in Leverett that use it all the time. The dam will also allow those who maintain the pond to easily cut down on invasive species. Currently, invasive species such as milfoil, curly leaf pondweed, and bladderwort can become a problem in Leverett Pond. So eight years ago, we, uh, we started another project, a program to um, control these things. You can't eliminate, the buzzword is control. We use herbicides, various types of herbicides with a, a licensed contractor. We have lots of permits to get, uh, to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. The purpose of that is to hopefully have a negative impact on the invasive species, but at a minimum to uh, reduce the biomass to a point where we're not spreading it by using mechanical equipment. And that works very well. Um, we, we spread the chemical and wait for about three or four weeks and all the green goes away and the, the lakes look, looks absolutely beautiful. Um, however, all the ro root systems are still there. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we'll bring in the hydro rake and we'll have them rake the root systems. And they, they bring all that stuff onto shore and then we have to move them 100 feet away from the shore so that there's no threat of the you know, rain coming, pushing all these seeds and, uh, and root, root systems back down into the pond. Instead of the invasive species problem reducing, as was expected when this treatment began, the population has remained consistent. The species control process has to be restarted every year, which means more and more herbicides have to be sprayed into the pond. However, with a new dam, the process becomes a lot less tedious and doesn't need to involve an annual dose of chemicals. A lot of these invasive species grow in very shallow water. A milfoil, for example, grows in approximately five feet of water. And if you could lower the dam, we'll, we'll be able to lower it four feet. That's going to have a very beneficial effect. Not so beneficial for the milfoil, but for us mm -hmm. uh, to try to keep it under control. And what we hope to be able to do is to lower the dam, lower the water level, not the dam, every few years and be able to treat the, the milfoil and some of the other species that way. Unfortunately, the path to a new dam hasn't been an easily accessible one, quite literally. I guess the first challenge for us once we got the property was to build a road out to it because the road that went out there was built in the 1800s. The Friends of Leverett Pond have dealt with many bureaucratic hurdles, including having to negotiate a property dispute in order to acquire rights to the dam during the process of receiving a permit to rebuild it. The property line was split right down the middle of the dam, and the two families, we talked to them and said, you don't, you don't want this headache, you don't need this liability, so deed this little chunk of property that the dam sits on to the friends of Lever Pond, the whole group around here, and give us right away access to it and we'll we'll take on the responsibility. The permit process is is uh, extensive. You know, everybody who might have an issue. So the Office of Underwater Archaeology has to say that we're not going to impact anything uh, they gave us an order of conditions. If we are digging down there and find something, we've got to stop and tell them. Um, the State Historical Commission is also interested. They gave us a release with some conditions. And the Town Historical Commission. Um, three Indian tribes are involved in whether there might be um, some issues or artifacts or um, issues with the Indian nations might have with it. The Friends of Leverett Pond did um, do some upgrades to the dam uh, in the 80s, uh, but the Office of Dam Safety has always said, you know, that we really needed to do a complete repair or replacement. The Friends of Leverett Pond have been working hard to raise money for a new dam and in the process have thrown a slew of social events in Leverett, including coffee and confections at the dump taking place every weekend, art auctions that supported local artists as well as the pond, and a wine tasting with selections from around the world. 
The Friends of Leverett Pond's efforts have fostered collaboration with many neighboring towns, businesses, and schools, and will continue to do so until enough money is raised to build Leverett's new dam. As of May 2019, Friends of Leverett Pond has raised $200,000 and has $160,000 more to go. Once they raise that $160,000, the dam will take about a year to be replaced. The next goals of Friends of Leverett Pond are to install a free loan, a canoe, or kayak station at the pond access. Further plans could include winter and summer fishing competitions, a bird hide project, or an annual regatta. If you have any interest in these, please join the Friends of Leverett Pond or let them know what you would like to see to make the pond more truly the Pond of Leverett Town.